Hello everyone, how's it going? Coming at you from one of my favorite tree portals in Portland. This beautiful ring of maples that I've known for many, many years. Spent a lot of time up at this place. Um, taking a nice little walk uh, before the sun sets, getting a lot of um, really early, early sunsets these days, but it's okay because I haven't had a fall here in Portland for about two years, so it's really nice to be home for this time of year. Um, anyways, I wanted to talk a little bit today about um, something that I mentioned in my video last week that, that kind of has stayed in my mind because um, it elicited a really interesting comment from a friend of mine, and um, it was something to the effect of how in um, some of what I've been reading so far in my studies of depth psychology and psychotherapy at Pacifica, um, something that I've noticed even though, um, you know, Pacifica by many, many, you know, in many ways is one of the most kind of progressive schools I've been able to find as far as um, psychology goes, in at least the literature of psychology, it seems like um, paradigms outside of kind of the Western realm of culture are um, easily excluded. So last week I, I was speaking about um, plant medicine and how I noticed that plant medicine and um, specifically shamanic plant medicine and the use of indigenous plant medicines for healing um, was conveniently left out of some of the literature that I was reading about the ancestors of modern psychology and the ancestors of my modern psychotherapy being shamanism. So in thinking more about this, about um, indigenous traditions uh, basically being left out of our current world, uh, you know, it's given me a lot of, a lot of food for thought. Um, I find it kind of really uh, appropriate right now, uh, specifically on the eve of Thanksgiving or or this holiday that we, we know of as Thanksgiving to be talking about indigenous traditions and indigenous culture being left out. Um, I'm not going to go into the history or culture of the United States or anything really political. That's not really what I'm trying to do here. Really. What I am trying to do is talk about um, the indigenous and non-Western cultures that have been conveniently, um, I guess, excluded from a lot of the discourse that I'm seeing in psychology today. Um, and of course, I know this, of course, applies to so many other places beyond just psychology, but that's, that's what I'm studying, so that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, so James Hillman really, really amazing figure, fantastic scholar, um, probably one of the most well-spoken um, gentlemen in the field of 20th century psychology that I've been able to find. Um, really incredible man. Um, he did a lot of his lectures at Pacifica, so I've been fortunate enough to have been granted access to a lot of his lectures and books and notes and all these things. Um, check out James Hillman. He's amazing. Um, but earlier this week, I was listening to um, a lecture he gave, presumably at Pacifica, called Why Study Greek Mythology? And it's basically a explanation of why Greek mythology is so important and kind of all the ways in which it factors into our understanding of psyche and mythology today. Um, and in that lecture, he basically says, you know, if, if you're speaking English, then you're speaking Greek. And I found that pretty interesting, thinking about all the ways that kind of the Greek and, you know, also Roman traditions has kind of uh, influenced our culture and, and remained a massive influence for everything that we know of. Um, and it is true, if you're speaking English, um, you're also speaking Greek, but beneath that is another truth that if you're speaking English, 
you're also speaking Anglo-Saxon, you're also speaking Old Norse, you're also speaking high ancient Germanic languages and the languages of the Visigoths and all these, um, you know, Germanic and Northern European tribes that were essentially wiped out when the Romans came through. You know, just read um, some of Julius Caesar's writing, you know, it's right there. Um, so, you know, that's just let kind of given me um, just a lot of grist for my mental mill to think about and um, trying to basically, I think a journey for me that I'm on personally, um, kind of within this larger journey of studying psychology is a journey of basically trying to sift through some of the remains of Western indigenous cultures, um, pre-Roman cultures, and basically try to pick out these threads of tradition and these threads of meaning um, and myth that still exist, um, that weren't wiped out by Rome, essentially. Um, and even, you know, just the most immediate thing I can think of is the days of the week. You know, literally, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are all named after ancient Norse gods. So Tuesday is Tears Day, the sky god, the god of war. Um, Wednesday is Odin's Day, or Woden's Day. Um, Thursday is Thor's Day, the Marvel action hero. Uh, <laughs> uh, and Friday is Frey's Day, kind of the masculine god of um, abundance in the home and agriculture and fertility. So literally the names of the days of the week are inherited from a indigenous Northern European tradition. Um, and I just find that really interesting because yes, if we're speaking English, we're speaking Greek, but also, you know, the, the remains of indigenous European culture um, is really everywhere. And I think it's something that I'm just particularly interested in trying to to find that, trying to find the remainders of that, that haven't been completely wiped out. Um, you know, a lot of these traditions, like, like the Norse traditions and the Celtic traditions, were barely written down. Most of what we have was either written down by Rome, or was written down by people from that same culture who had been Christianized hundreds of years later, like Snorri Sturluson, who wrote down all of the um, Edda sagas in Norse culture, you know, most of what what we know about ancient Norse culture and mythology comes from this Icelandic guy Snorri, uh, who was a Christian. So you know, it's hard to find this stuff, but um, there's there's another saying that you know history is written by the winners, and you know I would even say that culture is written by the winners. So in the case of Europe, that's Rome and um, by way of Rome, Greece. So, you know, I, I'm incredibly grateful and thankful to have this um, time to delve into Greek mythology and to have, you know, so many wonderful ba scholars basically at my fingertips who are masters of this tradition and can talk about all the myths that you know, animate our world, the myths of Demeter and Persephone and Daedalus and Icarus and Oedipus, of course. Um, it's kind of the basis of Western psychoanalysis is a really deep understanding of Greek mythology. Um, but it feels a little ethnocentric to me and it feels honestly a little um, colonized and I think that's just part of my personal journey on this path is trying to uncover some of the threads of um, what would be an indigenous cult culture um, and an indigenous heritage of my ancestors um, who weren't Greek, you know, who weren't Greek. Um, so that feels important to me, and it feels important to be talking about this today, um, you know, one year out of Standing Rock when we just had that massive uh, oil spill earlier this week in South Dakota from the Keystone XL pipeline. 
um, you know, where one year ago uh, indigenous people were being sprayed with water cannons and having dogs released on them uh, on their own land uh, to protect their own water. So it just feels uh, really important to be talking about this and trying to take this kind of um, trying to basically attempt to decolonize my own psyche and my own soul as much as possible. Um, to me that feels really important and is a really deep aspect of my own personal journey delving into psychology, delving into um, culture and myth, um, really understanding this idea of mythopoesis which is kind of the cornerstone of what I'm learning. Mythopoesis meaning basically crafting a deeply significant narrative. Making myth out of some sort of story. Um, and I feel like part of the mythopoesis of our time right now is decolonizing ourselves and doing what we can to sift through the cultural rubble of our world and our civilization and basically try to find you know, pot shards and threads from our really ancient past, our pre-colonized past, um, because it's something that affects all of us, you know? It's not just something for people in the Amazon or people on Standing Rock, you know, this is um, a story that is significant to a lot of people. So that's really all I got to say today uh, on the eve of Thanksgiving trying to bring in a little bit of um, decolonized awareness, uh, doing what I can at least to do that for myself and hopefully inspire it for others. So um, yeah, that's all I got today, folks. Much love. Pew, pew.